It was only when I looked out of the window at the birds eating at the bird table that I realised how silent the house was. All the people who had come at the time of Mary's death had now gone away. It had all been like a bad dream. It now dawned on me that when Mary was alive, the house was always full of people and that they came to see her. She was a person who liked everyone. I never really had much to say to them. I would usually hide myself away in the shed and tinker with old engines and such. My eyes rested on the altar Mary had set up. I had never really paid much attention to it before, as I had no interest in such things. It was the same with Mass on Sundays. I only went just to keep her happy. I looked at the photo that was taken about a year after we were married. She looked so young then. Where had all those years gone? I always thought that this must have been a relation of Mary's, or perhaps a childhood friend. I remember I once asked her who it was. She just smiled at me and said, That's my little friend. Perhaps some weekend you would take me to her grave. Later that day I decided to visit Mary's grave. When I got back home, I suddenly got the urge to tidy up Mary's personal effects that cluttered the shelves underneath her altar. This is the story of Kathleen Kilban and a brief account of how she spent the year previous to her death at the early age of 13 years. It is a sad story, but the sad stories of this world are Kathleen often was times born the in the industrial town of Perth in Scotland in 1933. Her parents had emigrated from Apple Island. She was two years old when her mother died from tuberculosis and her father left the child in an orphanage. As her twelfth birthday approached, it was noticed that she'd been ailing for some time, so the nuns arranged to send her to her grandmother, who lived in Clockmore. I also that felt time. that during that time I was close to a very holy child. She was always fond of prayer, and the rosary was her favourite. With the beads under the bedclothes, her eyes closed and her lips moving silently, she said rosary after rosary. And so while the other Kathleen sat beside me, I felt I was close to a saint. A little saint who liked to play games, to get letters and presents, and loved to nestle close to anyone who was fond of her. The nurse reasoned with her and told her she would sleep and have no pain. And in spite of herself, Kathleen blurted out, But I don't mind pain. 
I want to suffer for our Lord. Kathleen's lips moved in prayer, and then she looked at Rita and said, I have just said a prayer for you, and you'll never again have a headache. Rita is still alive, is married and has two in family, a boy and a girl. And she acknowledges that although she used to suffer from bouts of splitting headaches from her childhood, she never had suffered one since that moment that Kathleen had assured her. From 1.30am, a nurse was with Kathleen, who sometimes talked. But her voice was so indistinct that nobody could distinguish the words. At two o'clock on October the 7th, the morning of the Feast of the Holy Rosary, her voice suddenly stopped. An expectant look came into her eyes. Then her eyes stared open and glazed, and a shiver passed through her body. Then her body stiffened and lay still. She was dead. It was hard to realise that the child I had known, had played games with, and who had so often sat on my knees, had already gone on to that long journey into eternity, had seen God and now knew what heaven was like. After I finished the book I sat there for a long time. I found it hard to fight back the tears. I again remembered Mary's words to me. That's my little friend. Perhaps some weekend you would take me to her grave. Right then I hated myself for not having taken her. I looked over at Mary's altar, at her photograph, and at the picture of the girl Kathleen. Mary's rosary beads sat there at the feet of the statue. Right then it seemed so clear to me, I had to go to this girl's grave and take Mary's rosary beads and a photograph of her with me and place them on her grave. I reckoned it to be about 170 miles to Ackland Island where Kathleen is buried, a four or five hour trip by car. I could do it in a day. But somehow that felt too easy. As I studied the map, seeing familiar place names, I remembered those walking holidays Mary and I would take back in the early days of our marriage. We would set out with a backpack, a flask of tea and sandwiches, walking all over Donegal and the neighbouring counties, staying the night in bed and breakfast, and sometimes even sleeping out underneath the stars if the weather was mild. I didn't even have to think about it. I knew then that I would be walking to Kathleen's grave. Later that same day, I sat in the caravan I kept in the back garden and started to read Kathleen's story again. But sleep overtook me. I awoke 
with a start and reached for the pen and paper on the table and quickly jotted down the words that had flashed into my head in that state between dreaming and wakefulness. O oh, my dear Jesus, as I ponder the life of this pure soul, the little white rose of Achel, I pray you, if it be your divine and holy will, that this remarkable girl, Kathleen Coban, be numbered among your saints. May Our Lady receive and present to your divine heart my special intention to arrive safely at Kathleen's grave so I can present her with my wife's rosary beads and a picture, which Kathleen will whisper to Our Lady on my behalf and send me a rose from her heart. Amen. Coming back to this prayer all throughout the rest of the day, it was not something that I'd ever written, and to be honest, it had me spooked. But upon waking the next morning, after a fitful sleep, it all made sense. I sat in the kitchen over a cup of tea and recalled the dream I had of walking along country roads and through towns and villages with a rucksack on my back. And I attached to it a large picture of Kathleen and written underneath her name were the words, The Holy Child of Acho. Pilgrimage. And in the dream people came and spoke to me. I was handing out cards, cards which had the picture of Kathleen on one side and the prayer I had written on the other. As I sat there reliving the vivid dream, I couldn't help but smile. I knew now that it was Mary's work and she had given me the prayer and showed me what to do with it. Walking to Kathleen's grave was all well and good, but even better would be telling her story to the people I met along the way. That morning I wrote out the prayer again. I sketched out a few ideas of how the card and the poster should look. I then wrote out a summary of Kathleen's story that I would have printed on a leaflet and posted it all off to a printing shop in Letterkenny. I included the book from which they could take the photograph of Kathleen, asking them to return it to me. The finished cards, leaflets and poster arrived a week later and by that time I had put together everything I would need for the walk that I expected to take me up to three weeks to complete. I give Mary's altar a last look, locked up the house, and I was on my way.
kafası. Bu da kent biliyor. Sorry, I don't speak Irish. Oh, pardon. Tutu torsa. Easy, serious. Sorry, I can't. I don't understand. Tatu Torsa. Oh, it's very cold. Sit down. Thank you. And what's your name? Victor. Victor. Where are you from, Victor? In a show. It's a long bit away. It is. Do you like a cup of tea, Victor? I would. Thank you very much. No bother. Thank you. You know that little girl? Miss Kathleen Kilban. You know her? Actually, have a photograph of her. Yes, I do. This is her picture here, and the little blue ribbon. I don't believe this. Yes. I was down at her grave. Were you? Yes, I went down on the 25th of June this year. Mm -hmm. Very peaceful. It seemed to me to be more than just a coincidence that I would accidentally fall asleep outside the house of someone who knew Kathleen, had been to her grave and kept a picture of her in her home.
many years ago. She was about your age. Aye, but why is she on your back? Because I'm going to her grave. Where's that at? Down in County Mayo, in Apple Island. How are you getting there? Go to walk. People have offered me lifts, but I'd rather walk. I'm going to walk from y yeah. here yeah. to Mayo? Yes. That's not very far. It is. It is, but I'm a young man. I'll make it. Would you like a wee bit of information on her? Yes, please. Right. You can read all about her and then you'll know about her. Is that okay? Yeah. She's here. You can say a wee prayer to her. But, like, it's uh, County Mayo, not a bit far to be walking for a wee girl. I know. I know. But but that's what I do. Alright, okay. That alright then? Yeah. Be happy? Yeah. That's okay. Have a good time. Thank See you, you later. Then. Bye. 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 And 
wattles may Nine beam rows will I have there A hive for the honeybee And live alone in the bee love clay Not heard of her, no. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll give you a wee bit of information here. Oh, Can I yeah. read it? Yeah, like that, thank That's you. Yeah. I'll read that. That's grand. Nice. Then you know a wee bit about her. Thank you and very you much. You might go to your grave yourself. Okay. Is that alright? Thank you very much. Okay. You have a good day. Have a good day. I will. Island. 
Would you like a wee bit of information on it? Whereabouts is the graveyard? It's shouted at uh, Kildowna. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Do you know Athelene at all? I do, yeah, I do. Well, that, well, that's where she's buried. That's oh, where I'm going. Oh, would you like a little bit of information on her? I would love some, yes. Oh, that's grand. Love something here, just keep it handy for people like yourself. Oh, lovely. And, uh, there's actually a wee prayer for the there. Oh, that's very kind of you. That's lovely. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's lovely. It's nice to see if you're interested in her. Oh, definitely, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, I read that. That's lovely. Well, good luck on your journey. Okay. All the All best. The best. Thank, thank you, you. Mark. I made it, Kathleen. At long last, I made it. I brought something that I want to leave at your grave. It's my wife's rosary beads. And I brought her photograph. I will leave here with you.
Now that my pilgrimage was at an end, I didn't feel quite ready to go home to an empty house. I remembered the book about the mountain called Kropatrick that the nice lady had given me, and after reading through it, it seemed right for me to go there. But it was more than that. I felt a very strong compulsion to go. Throughout my walk, it became obvious to me that the vast majority of people I came across showed no interest in the poster of Kathleen, the little girl from a generation ago. But something good did come out of my journey. I had found my faith and I went into a church to light a candle for my wife and Kathleen. <laughs>